Howdy, everybody. It's Brian Hogue, the host of Chiller Chat. Tonight I'm here with my 8 o'clock Chiller Night pre show. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good week. Can't complain. It's been a very good week. Brand new episode tonight on Chiller Night Theater coming up at 9 o'clock, by the way. Brand new episode as we'll be playing The Bat, starring Agnes Moorhead and Vincent Price. We'll get into the schedule and we'll hit here in a little bit. Um, but that's coming up. A brand new episode tonight. And then next week, and I'll talk a little bit more about this as we, we go on in this, uh, the presentation here, a brand new chiller chat for next Saturday. Okay, brand new Chiller Night Theater tonight and brand new chiller chat next week. And that'll be with Chad Cornell of the, uh, uh, the EVPS uh, uh, Society. So uh, he'll be talking about his paranormal investigations. And I am, hey, Brad, Brad Beckwith is back. He says, I'm back. Well, sort of, I'm at the mall in Erie. Did, did you guys miss me? Yes, yes, of course we missed you. Now you were at the, Weren't you at the Erie Festival last week? Is that where you were at? I could be wrong, but maybe that's <laughs> yes. But your your absence was was noticeable. So uh, glad to see you're back, and uh, we, I'm seeing some other people joining us as as I continue here. So happy to have you on. Um, now I'll get into the uh, the scheduling coming up here. Like I said, new episodes coming up tonight, and then new episode of of uh, Chiller Chat next Saturday night. Um, now, if you happen to go on to Chiller Night at, at ChillerNightTheater.com, um, you'll notice that I, I took down the, the page with the Chiller Night Theater episodes. Okay, and if you go to the, <laughs> the Chiller Night Theater YouTube channel, you'll also notice that I took down those episodes and um it's just because it, it it's just maybe for now uh and it's it's not for a bad reason it's for it's actually for a good reason um it's because i am submitting media kits um you know throughout the the country you know to different uh, tv stations and stuff and so this is the product and i and i at this time you know, the product is not going to be um, available to, to the public, you know. But what we can do is every Saturday night, you will have, uh, an, you know, your episode available on, on Chiller, of, of Chiller Night Theater on Stream TV. So, <laughs> but anyways, that's what's going on there. If you don't see the episodes, you know, obviously I still have them. I've set them on private at this point because, like I said, it you know I'm 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 pushing for syndication, so I can't have I can't have my episodes out there right now um, available to to everybody to just be able to download or or whatever. So uh, that's that's the reasoning behind it. So, but tonight, for example. We'll be we'll be showing the bat, okay? So that one you can go to the website and that episode is available. That episode is available to watch. Whatever the feature episode is for the week, you will be able to to uh, to view that. So for now, anyways, that's a, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna be doing this because, like I say, you know, this is something that. Is being presented to, to to TV stations all across the United States, so I cannot have this just just uh, available to the to the public at this time. That's not how it. <laughs> I I just can't do it that way and still be able to promote and push uh, push the show to a TV station. So. But anyways, that's what's going on there. If you go there, don't panic. It's not for a bad reason. It's actually for a very good reason. So uh, Chiller Chats, however, you can go on, and I, I still have all of those available um, to view. 
So everything's fine with Chiller Chat. Actually, everything's fine with Chiller Night Theater. It's just that I can't, I can't just have those available uh, to the public at this point. So, and I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it it, it stays that way because, um, well, that's a <laughs> that's a, that's probably a, a whole new episode in and of itself to to go to go into that. But um, no, it's it's for a very good reason. I'm very happy with with things right now, and uh, I've gotten some positive responses this week, and I'm I'm very happy with how this whole thing's going. But for you tonight, those watching me here, um, and and also, you can see the link above in my in my uh, description comment. Um, if you go to streammedia.tv, that shows you the um, that not only shows you the schedule but you can watch the programming right there online. If you live in Oil City or the surrounding area, Oil City, Cranberry, um, Pennsylvania, um, you can watch on Stream TV, and it's channel 20, Comcast channel 20, and you can watch the chiller programming all night long from 9 p.m. until 3.30, 3.45, something like that, a.m. Um, the reason I can't tell you that specifically is because depending on what movie we play, uh, the movies may vary in, in time. That's why I always say from 3.30 to 3.45. So um, I see some more people jumping on here. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight's schedule, let me, let me go over that right now. I'm going to flip over to the other screen. So for a a minute or two, I won't be able to see any comments just until I get done here. Okay, tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for those outside of this viewing area, uh, online or on the Roku, uh, tonight's episode, brand new episode, Chiller Night Theater, Jack Shadow Features the Bat, starring Agnes Moorhead and Vincent Price. You may remember Agnes Moorhead as... Uh, the um the 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 mother-in-law on bewitched remember the the show bewitched uh, uh, samantha's um mother the witch's mother well uh, that's her but anyways um now 11 p.m chiller chat with guest jennifer sadler jennifer was the author of uh chiller night the spirit of halloween we're gonna have her on we're gonna be talking about this book right here so I might even mention that again here pretty quick. 11.30, Chiller Night Theater, Jack Shadow will feature the werewolf of Washington. And if you're tired of politics and just tired of it all, don't worry. It's not that kind of movie. It's just a, it's just a big, dumb, fun horror movie. You know, it just happens to be a werewolf in Washington. So uh, fear not those who are politically... Um, fatigued. And at 1.30 a.m., Chiller Chat with Gary Striner. I think I wrote Steiner. Okay, it's Striner. <laughs> Gary Striner was the uh, uh, one of the producers of Night of the Living Dead. And, and this is an older episode. This was, this was years ago. But um, I thought it was kind of neat. I wanted to show this one again because it's, it's kind of a neat interview. I start out with he he and I start out in the Evans City Cemetery where they filmed the opening scene of Night of the Living Dead. And uh, I don't know if you, re, you know, if you recall that scene, but uh, there's Johnny and, and Barbara, brother and sister, go to the cemetery. And that's when we are first, we as viewers are first introduced to the, the zombie epidemic. Johnny gets attacked. Now, Johnny, the guy who gets attacked there, you know, the guy, they're coming to get you, Bob, who's taunting his sister. Kind of a jerk, you know, and in horror movies, you know, you're usually the first to get it. But anyways, uh, Gary is, is Russ Striner's brother. Russ Striner is the actor who played Johnny. So that's who that is. Um, the second segment of our interview, we go to the location to the farmhouse where they had the old farmhouse where the, the um, most of the movie takes place. And then, uh, so that's tonight's Chiller Chat at 1.30. Now, 2 a.m., we top off the night by showing, once again, the feature movie of the night, The Bat. So, 
that is the schedule for tonight. All right. Let me get back over to my other screen to see if anybody else has commented. Okay. And just to remind you, uh, this is a kind of just a, an interactive segment, a little presentation, if you will, before the chiller programming with, that begins at 9 o'clock on Stream TV. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or <laughs> whatever, you know, just want to shout out hi, uh, I encourage you to do so. And I will continually be, uh, be refreshing this. Okay, Jason Bates. Watching from Philly, Exxon area. Love the show. Well, thank you, Jason. Watching over from Philly. That's cool. Yeah. And then I uh, like Brad's comment. Okay. There's Chad. Chad saying hey. Chad Cornell. He's going to be the uh, the guest on Chiller Chat tomorrow night. So and or tomorrow night <laughs> next next Saturday. Holy cow! Wow, I'm really in a time zone here. But. Uh, yeah, Chad, Chad's going to be on Chiller Chat next Saturday, and it'll be a, uh, an all-new episode. So, okay, I'm going to close this, minimize this page. I'm getting kind of good at this, flipping around like this. All right. So, I am going to go over a list that I have here in just a second. Now, Chad, just to let you know, and I'll talk, I'll mention this a lot more uh, next Chiller Night pre-show next Saturday, but uh, Chad will be the guest on on Chiller Chat next Saturday, and he's the uh, he's the host of the Eerie Voice at Live Paranormal, and uh, he's the founder and lead investigator at uh, EVPS, and that stands for the Eerie Voices Paranormal Society. So, um, like I said. He is uh, going to be talking about his investigations, you know, stuff he's been on already, and upcoming investigations. And so that's going to be a neat show. Now tonight, let me check this other screen here. Okay, all right, all right, moving right along. Okay, now comes the part of the night where I'm going to, I'm going to give the list. This is the list for the week. Normally it's a 10 or we even did a 25 list one time, but this is the 15 worst horror movies of all time. 15 worst horror movies of all time. Now I did, I did kind of peek ahead on this list right before I started this broadcast. And I can honestly say I absolutely do not agree with this list, but we'll, we'll go with what their list is saying and feel free to share any that you think should be on the, the list as well. All right, 15, now I got this from ScreenRant.com, ScreenRant.com. All right, number 15 on the list is Creepshow 3 from 2007. I'm gonna go ahead and agree with that one because uh, I love Creepshow and Creepshow 2, with the, you know, the George Romero ones back, back in the 80s. Creepshow 3, I started watching it because I thought it was going to be a little bit more like the other two, and it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't even watch it, so um, <laughs> I, had, I couldn't even, I couldn't keep my interest in it long enough to watch it, so yeah, heck. And then the next one, 14, number 14, is The Happening, uh, starring Mark Wahlberg back in uh, 2008. One of the M. Night Shyamalan movies. I actually didn't think that was a bad movie at all. I thought that was, I was entertained by that movie. Um, sometimes people will throw a, uh, a well-known movie on the list because, God forbid, you watch it, watch something popular or well-known or something with a well-known actor. You know, that's, you know, we're, <laughs> I don't know, some of these movie elitists are so much they're above that, you know. That's that's not good enough for them. They like the obscure, but um, I don't know. Maybe this guy just truly didn't like the movie. I don't know, but I didn't think I I didn't I thought that was a good movie. Now number thirteen on the list. This is funny. This is funny because I I I mentioned this 
not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to think of, I was trying to think of the name of this movie. I was, I was here on a pre-show talking about it. It's called Blood Freak, and it's from 1972. And this is, this is horrible. This is a horrible movie. Um, as a joke, one time I was, I was thinking about, we did this thing where Jack Shadow was showing the trailer to Blood Freak, and we were going to play it as a Thanksgiving movie. And then Jack shuts down the trailer and says, I'm sorry, I cannot do this to you good people. Uh, it's funny because it, it's this guy running around with this big turkey head. So he's carving up the human victims. And it's just, it's a horrible movie. <laughs> it's stupid. It's so dumb. I mean, it, it, you know... <laughs> If anybody could sit there and go through it, I mean, watch it and let me know what you think. Now I'm going to flip. Right, I'm going to flip back to the other screen just to see if there are any comments. Uh, I do not see any comments. Okay, I'm okay. Oh, Kelly Allen is joined. Okay. Oh, right. Kelly is. Um, I have I have a few of Kelly's books. Actually, before I get into that. I'm going to, I'll, I'll check with Kelly sometime just in, you know, a private message him to see if I can have him on one of my chiller chats. I, I, I've been thinking about that lately here, but, um, but glad to see everybody who's, who's joined the show here, uh, the, the chiller night pre-show. I'm glad to have you on. If you don't know what this is, if, if this is your first time here, uh, it's just me, Brian Hogue. I'm sitting here, just a very informal, interactive, hopefully, um, uh, presentation. It's not really even a show. It's just a little presentation that I have uh, to kind of bring awareness to what we have at nine, starting at 9 p.m. every Saturday night. That's every Saturday night on Stream TV. I show episodes, various episodes of Chiller Night Theater and my talk show, Chiller Chat. Chiller Chat is a uh, talk show, a weekly talk show, where I I discuss with guests. I, we talk about horror and science fiction, the paranormal, or Anything that that kind of encapsulates those topics, uh, that's what we talk about. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting show. And uh, Chiller Night Theater, of course, is uh, kind of a throwback to the old uh, hosted horror shows of the uh, you know the old '50s, '60s, and '70s, even the '80s. You know where where they were kind of at their pinnacle of popularity back back then at that time. Chiller Night Theater features. Uh, Horror and science fiction movies of yesteryear, some of the classic and some of the not so classic ones. So uh, hosted by Jack Shadow, and I think you'll like it. But anyway, let me get back to my list now. We we're talking about the 15 worst horror movies of all times. Uh, number 12 on that list we went through uh, is Gnaw 2, Food of the Gods from 1989. Gnaw 2. It looks like it's about. Uh, some rats and these are these are bad looking rats they got red eyes in this picture here that i'm looking at so i don't know i cannot comment i cannot give an informed opinion on that one i've never seen it i've heard of the first one i've heard of gnaw and i don't know if i've ever seen gnaw in my life but gnaw too made this list and not a good list okay number 11 is silent night deadly night five this is not <laughs> Parts one through four are, are, are not on this list, folks, but number five, I mean, that's the one that, that pushed the limit. And that's Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker from 1991. Okay, it made the list here. Okay, this next one is Sleepwalkers from 1992. Sleepwalkers is number 10. I've never seen that movie. It's, it's based on a Stephen King uh, movie. Um, screenplay, screen, sleepwalkers, sleepwalkers. Okay. I've heard of that movie. If I've seen it, it's been so long ago that I don't remember. So I can't give, I can't give you an, an opinion there. Okay. Number nine, the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. That's the actual title of this 1964 movie. Again, number nine is the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. I have never in my life heard of that. Maybe I'll play that until I'll see if that's a public domain movie. And if so, oh, 
I don't know. Just by that title alone, I'm tempted to play that. Now, number eight, I am, I am, I am really, really against being on this list. It's it's Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers from 1995. That's Halloween Part Six. That's actually one of my favorite Halloween movies. So, um, that was the last one featuring Donald Pleasance as uh, as the Doctor. Um, yeah, that's weird that that would be on there. I actually, I I love watching that at least once a year I, it, around Halloween. I, I actually enjoy that movie. So I do not agree with that. Um, Raymond, Raymond German, I, can you show Fright Night? Hey, Raymond, glad to see you joining. I would, I would like to show Fright Night. I love Fright Night, but I can't show that one because it's it's not a public domain movie. Uh, meaning I would need a, a certain license to to feature that one and at this time I don't have that which is kind of why I'm, I'm I'm reaching out to different TV stations because uh, if if I if I land a spot with a different TV station who actually does have a license to play that then um, for example I, I, I'll give you the distinct difference between chiller theater that used to be now Raymond I don't think you're in in the uh, Northwest Pennsylvania area but for many of us who did grow up in Northwest Pennsylvania or Western Pennsylvania I should say um, we watched a show a lot of us did back in the 60s 70s and 80s early 80s called Chiller Theater and its host was Bill Chilly Billy Cardell um, and that aired out of WPXI in Pittsburgh it was WIIC and then later became WPXI. WPXI was the TV station that featured Chiller Theater. Now WPXI had the license. They purchased a license and the, with that license, you had an agreement. The agreement was like you could play maybe Universal's Frankenstein maybe maybe three times that year or something like that or, or a hammer you know, the horrors of Dracula, you could play that maybe, you know, a, a limited number of times you could feature that movie. And that's the difference between what they did, what a TV station owning that show who has that license and, and from what I'm currently doing, which is featuring the public domain movies because I don't have that license. And, um, so that's how, that's how that works right now. Um, and then Jason Jason Bates says, but I would love I, I love Fright Night, uh, by the way. In fact, Raymond, the uh, the name Chiller Night was a was a is, it's a combination of Chiller Theater because I grew up watching Chiller Theater. That's my inspiration for doing the shows that I'm doing, and Fright Night Chiller Night. So that's how that's how that came to be. Jason Bates said Halloween Six. The producers cut was great. The producer's cut. Now, I, I don't know if I've seen that, Jason. Um, I don't know if I've seen that. I would like to. I actually enjoy that movie. I I, th I think it has a very Halloweenish, and I don't mean just a Halloween movie franchise. I mean a, a Halloweenish seasonal um, kind of feel to it. So I, I really enjoy that one. Jason also says, I'm guessing Ega is on the list. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, I, I, I read through, oh, Raymond says, thanks. Okay, uh, Raymond's from Virginia, okay. I don't know if you would have, actually some of the surrounding states in, in the tri-state area did get chiller theater. I don't know if it went down that far though. But, um, but well, speaking of that list, Jason, let's see if Ega is on there. Ega might be next week's movie, by the way. Just giving you a heads up. Um, Leprechaun is number seven. Leprechaun in the Hood. Okay, that's... All right, that's not the first Leprechaun movie. You know? Leprechaun in the Hood is from... Ninth, or I'm sorry, the year 2000. Which one is that? It doesn't say. Uh, after... Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's Leprechaun 5. So, all right. Not too many movies when you get to part five are going to be all that 
great. Some of them are. I mean, some of the long, long-standing franchises, but but evidently not Leprechaun. All right. Uh, number six, Kingdom of the Spiders from 1977. Uh, William Shatner, I believe. Yes, William Shatner is in this movie about killing spiders. About killing spiders from the kingdom of the spiders, I guess. So, uh, Shatner plays Dr. Robert Rack Hans Hansen, a local vet who investigates the strange occurrence but quickly finds himself outmatched by the vicious arachnids. Holding up with other residents in a hotel lodge, he makes for a plan to fight back. That was ki the Kingdom of the Spiders. There is a uh, kind of a variety of movies here on this list. They're not just targeting certain movies. They're, well, they're supposed to be... <laughs> now here's another one, Maximum Overdrive from 1986. Remember the truck with the big green goblin face on it? Um, Stephen King movie. I don't think that was a bad movie. I, I mean, it wasn't the greatest, but I don't think it should be on the, the 15 worst movies of of all time. Holy cow. Maybe I'm just... I like the green goblin. I thought that was cool, having the green goblin's face on that thing, but... Uh, uh, all right, all right. Now we're down to number four on the list, Werewolf. Werewolf from 1996. I've never seen this movie, also known as Arizona Werewolf. Okay, well, featuring Martin Sheen's brother, Joe Estevez. Huh, all right. When an archaeological dig unearths an unusual-looking skeleton with a dangerous power, anyone who gets scratched by it turns into a werewolf. All right. Well, evidently that's how this this werewolf epidemic is is spread by being scratched. Let me check over here. See if we got any more comments. Tanya Lee Rogers says hello. Well, hello, Tanya. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight for the Chiller Night pre-show. Right now, you caught us going through the uh, the 15 worst movies, worst horror movies of all time of all time. Okay, now this is according to the Screen Rant. Um, okay, and feel free to add anything that you think should be on the list, like like Jason. Um, Jason listed Ega, and and Jason would would not be wrong. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's it's an interesting movie, Ega. And, and, and by golly, we might be, maybe we'll play that one next week for Chiller Night Theater. We actually do that where Jack's, the Jack's, uh, um, I always make fun of that movie and with good reason. Um, but, but I tell you what, it, it really is kind of one of those, um, just one of those, those fun Saturday night hosted horror shows. You just, you know, it's like, kind of like a train wreck. You just got, you know, as bad as it is, you just want to keep looking at it. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what more to say. Jack Shadow's got plenty to say about Ega, though. And that, well, maybe I will play that next next week. I haven't played that one in a while. Um, um, okay, number three on the list. Plan 9 from Outer Space from 1959. That's another one that I, I will definitely make a point to play for uh, Chiller Night Theater. It's... I don't know what your, it, it was also known as uh, Grave Robbers from Outer Space. It was uh, often deemed the worst movie ever made. I don't know, what are your feelings on this? Uh, Production-wise, yeah, it was a horrible, horrible movie. The only redeeming factor here is, if, if you look at the idea of what Ed Wood was, you know, the story, yes, it's stupid, <laughs> but, you know, if you look at the story, like, like the plot of it, okay, without getting into um, that, just looking how dumb it is, aliens, and they're, and they're, they're invading the, the world, and, and to conquer the world, what do they do? They implement Plan 9. Plan 9 is to raise the dead, and, and, help the aliens take over and conquer the world. Okay, the movie's horrible, but the plot is actually not that bad. If, if it were done in a uh, 
maybe in a, a more modern setting with a more modern movie and with the, the special effects and, and uh, you know, I don't know. Could it, could it have been a good movie? <laughs> maybe if it hadn't been made, but you know what? They're kind of re they're kind of remaking Plan Nine from Outer Space because, and I say that in a way because, uh, um, now now, all right, I'm just going to make the six degrees of separation here. I'm going to make a comparison here. Uh, Ed Wood, he filmed he he got some footage of Bella Lugosi outside of Bella's home, just doing stupid thing like smelling a flower and acting sad and going through a you know, a, a range of emotions there. And then, and then later, Ed put that on film and used it in his movie and, and hyped it up as Bela Lugosi's last movie. <laughs> so, but what he did was he made the footage fit his, his storyline. Awkwardly, but that's what he did. Um, coincidentally enough, Star Wars Episode Nine nine okay lucasfilms plan nine is to take footage of carrie fisher who who unfortunately passed away in between uh after the last jedi and, and this one here so maybe this is going to be lucas's uh plan plan nine i don't know it's kind of strange though i mean they're doing it with the blessing of carrie fisher's uh family members so and now jason okay No. He got is a guilty pleasure, Jason says. I'm going back here and seeing some of these comments. Um Okay, Raymond says no. I'm sorry, Raymond. I was I was I was off rambling about another topic, so I'm not sure um what to know. Probably about Chiller Theater, I'm guessing, because it was the last last thing I'd mentioned about Virginia. Jason says uh, what's up, Brian? Can't stay on filming the pilot for Paranormal Highway tonight. Just wanted to say hi. Well, thank you, Jason. Thanks for stopping by. I know you were a guest on Chiller Chat not too long ago, and uh, and and you were you were talking about the Paranormal Highway. So uh, yeah, let us know when that is, or this episode here, the pilot is done, and. Uh, I'd like to check that out. I'm sure our viewers for Chiller Night, the Chiller programming would as well. So um, Raymond says, Lugosi died and his chiropractor took over. Yeah, yeah, and there's a, get, a, a, a good movie. I was gonna say good and Ed Wood at the same time. So. <laughs> um, there's a really good movie called Ed Wood. It was um, a Tim Burton movie and starring Johnny Depp as Ed Wood. And starting, uh, starring uh, Martin Landau as, as Bella Lugosi. He does a great job uh, playing Bella Lugosi in that movie. But yeah, some of the some of the it's a movie, so obviously some of the um, some of the story points and topics are going to be exaggerated a little bit, but probably not much. I mean, this stuff really did happen. If you want to get a kind of a humorous take on it, you know, there's a little bit of a humorous spin on it. Uh, watch the movie Ed Wood back in the 90s that came out but it talks about you know it talks about you know it does mention Plan 9 from Outer Space and how, what they had to go through to even get the movie produced I think from a, um, some Baptist uh, some Baptist church or something within that area was going to produce the movie but they want they one of the conditions was they wanted to change the name because it was going to be Grave Robbers from Outer Space and they changed it to Plan Nine from Outer Space because they felt that grave robbers uh, sounded a little too sacrilege. So, um, you know, maybe maybe back in when would Plan Nine come out in the fifties? I think maybe that I don't know. Maybe that would have been back then. You never know. You never know. Okay, now we are on. That was Plan Nine from Outer Space. Going back to that. Um, that was number three on the list. Now we're down to number two. Number two on the list out of 15 of the 15 worst horror movie of all time, according to ScreenRant.com. Number two is Troll 2 from 1990. Okay, there, there again. Th that's another set of movies I've never watched. 
And uh, people are sometimes surprised to hear that. Like, you've never seen, because I, a good friend of mine asked, you've never seen Troll? <laughs> I was like, no, I've, I've heard of Troll, you know, back in the 80s, but I never, I just never watched it. They think that because I'm, you know, I'm a horror host or, you know, I have connections with the horror host, Jack Shadow, that, um, <laughs> that I've, that I've seen all these. I, I just, some of them, I guess I, I guess I was, uh, I kind of overlooked when they were out. Um, okay, now, now number one, number one on this list is Manos, The Hands of Fate from 1966. I've not seen that one, but I have heard of it. In fact, that was one that I would be, I'm going to be checking out here uh, probably this coming uh, for season two of Chiller Night Theater. Uh, just because it's on this list, don't let that scare you away from, because there are a couple on this list that I actually liked. Like I know for uh, Halloween 6, I actually love that movie. I think it's a good movie. I'm not sure why it's on this list, but somebody evidently didn't like it. Who stuck it on here? Man Knows the Hands of Fate, 1966. Um, I've not seen that. I've, I've actually sat down with the intent to watch this movie before. Um, because it is a public domain movie, and I'd like to see if that's one I'm interested in playing for Chiller Night Theater. And if I am, I'll let you know. So that was the the 15 worst horror movies of all time. Not my opinion, but it is the opinion of Screen Rant. So let me refresh this. See if we have any. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Raymond says Jack Shadows tips and, and save. Let me see if I'm missing something here. <laughs> tips and save. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing the complete sentence there, uh, Raymond. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, but. Uh, Oh, save any. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, Jack Shadow's tips can save any movie. All right, all right. Well, I, I'm gonna like that. I like what I'm hearing. Um, you know that is kind of funny though. When 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 you have a movie like that, you know, do you? I I think it's fun. I just think that's. I think that is kind of fun to to sit there, even if you know it's a bad movie, because you know obviously the host is going to have fun with it and it's like you're all kind of in on the joke together so but the whole appeal to the ho horror host uh the host of horror show is um it, it, i don't know to me it was just something i grew up with probably a lot of people my age and, and older grew up with um or had the the chance to grow up with there's not so many of them out right now, at least available to where you can sit down and, and actually watch them on your TV from home, like uh, like Chiller Night Theater. You can do that through streammedia.tv. If you have a, a TV station nearby that you, and you know, let them know if you want to see Chiller Night Theater on there. I'd be happy to get in touch with them and uh, you know provide them with a, a media kit that has all the, uh, the episode or the the show's information on it. So we are reaching out all over the country and I, I can, I can, I can literally say I've, I've, um, attracted some attention, uh, just this week, literally, literally coast to coast, <laughs> you know, on the, up, uh, Massachusetts and, and California. Um, now I just got to fill in the rest of the middle, but, uh, Hey, we're working on it. We're working on it. But that's why, Raymond. I didn't. I don't know if you if you heard the beginning of this, but just to let you know, like the the shows, um, I I I set these shows on the YouTube channel for the Chiller Night Theater, not Chiller Chats, but Chiller Night Theater. I had to set those for private right now because of because this week, um, um, because I'm I'm reaching out trying to. Uh, submit the shows for syndication and well, I'm actually in the process of that. So uh, just, just for right now is the best thing to do is, is uh, 
kind of set those episodes. You can still watch the feature movie of the week. Um, like tonight is a brand new episode, the, the bat. So, which has not appeared on TV yet or on stream, t stream TV. So, um, but anyways, if you go to YouTube and you see those those episodes are not available to watch, um, just know that I kind of had to do that for now, just to kind of feel the waters and see how things are going to go. And uh, that's just a decision I kind of had to make. Uh, so, but um, hopefully you all will tune into Stream Media or Stream TV tonight at nine o'clock. Oh. That's in. I get a little talkative sometimes, so I, I see now it's like 8.42. So that's cool. I'm going to go over the schedule again. At 9 p.m. is um, Jack Shadow Features. Ah, let me get that. We'll be featuring The Bat. The Bat starring Agnes Moorhead and Vincent Price. Uh, it's a good movie. It's not not a horror movie but it is a it is a, uh, a good mystery thriller um very very entertaining it's actually one of my favorite ones that we've we've done you know in fact i, I gotta say one w within the top probably six episodes of chiller night theater in my years of doing this show uh the bat is it, it ranks up there as one of the one of the more enjoyable ones to watch this is a really good movie uh another is crucible of horror it's not a it's not a horror movie. It's more of a a, a thriller, and uh, I really really enjoy that. But so they don't always have to have vampires and and zombies and werewolves, although that does help. But in these rare uh, examples, the Bat and Crucible of Horror um, movies like that, they're actually. Um, very, very entertaining. So at 9 p.m., just in about 17 minutes, new episode on Chiller Night Theater. Jack Shadow features the bat at 11 p.m. Oh, hey, I want to mention this, too. Speaking of the bat, uh, Aura the Witch is back on this episode, not just in a flashback as one of the uh, classic clips from The Vault, uh, but but my wife, Ava, who plays who's played Aura the Witch since since uh oh gosh for 10 years uh due to scheduling differences and and all this um it's been tough for her to make it down when i've been filming these new episodes but she's finally back she's finally back and this is actually her first appearance on the show since we started filming it in the new tv studio set you know um with the with the uh the look and the sound from uh you know, embellished by Lightning Strike Productions, headed by uh, Luke Rio. So uh, definitely, definitely, uh, uh, I'm definitely happy about that to see to see Aura back on on the show on on new episodes, and she'll be up on upcoming ones as well. Uh, at 11 p.m. Chiller Chat with guest Jennifer Sadler. I mentioned this a little bit ago. Jennifer is the author of um, uh, Chiller Night, The Spirit of Halloween. This is a, a book about Jack Shadow, and it's a book about, I'll read the synopsis on the back, in fact. Five young teenagers head out together for a night of trick-or-treating, but lose themselves in a dimension of horror. Now they race against the clock to save their souls from the spirit of Halloween himself, Jack Shadow. This All Hallows' Eve fantasy is a thrill a minute, and the first in a new series of Halloween fun and terror. Take a step back in time through the veils between the living and the dead. Cover art by Rick Whitlow, and uh, the the in the illustrations are by uh, Scott Lubin. So, um, let's see if I can find one. There's the uh, the five kids right there. Try to. So, um, let's see if I. Oh, there's the man himself. The man, the myth, the monster, Jack Shadow. But um, this is available on, on Amazon.com. So, and it's also, it's, it's available in paperback and in Kindle. You can have instant access, folks, with that on Kindle. So, all right. 
That is at 11 p.m. Chiller Chat with guest Jennifer Sadler. Now at 11.30, Jack Shadow features The Werewolf of Washington. Another Chiller Night Theater episode, The Werewolf of Washington. And then at 1.30 a.m., uh, Chiller Chat, the guest is Gary Striner. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, Gary was one of the producers of Night of the Living Dead. I met with him in Evan City. We went to several of the locations, a few of the uh, filming locations, the uh, Evan City Cemetery with the famous chapel of the, of the cemetery behind us as we as we start to show out. And then we go to the farmland where they, they had the farmhouse for Night of the Living Dead, where they were, you know, cooped up and surrounded by zombies. So that's a neat one. It's an older episode, but I wanted to play it because I just, I like the fact that I'm there on the, the actual lo on location, uh, talking to one of the producers of, of the movie. And then at 2 a.m., uh, Chiller Night Theater, we top it off by featuring the feature movie of the night, The Bat. So let me, oh, and, and I just lost a screen. Let me pull that back up. Okay. Um, there we go. A little technically challenged a lot of times. All right. All right. So, folks, just to recap, I've got about 13 minutes to do so before 9 p.m. At 9 p.m., what happens then? Let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> Chiller Night Theater begins, and, and it's a night, a night of fun and fright. We're going to be watching episodes of Chiller Night Theater and Chiller Chat. Now, what are those? Chiller Night Theater is a hosted horror show where Jack Shadow features classic and, and not so classic movies from yesteryear, horror and science fiction movies from the, the golden age of, of schlock and horror. So if you like those old oldies but goodies, then tune in, <laughs> tune in to watch Chiller Night Theater tonight at 9 p.m. on Stream TV. And then following Chiller Night Theater, you, you see an episode of Chiller Chat. Chiller Chat is my talk show where I talk to guests about topics such as uh, you know, horror, science fiction, the paranormal. Uh, we, we, we've done movie reviews as long as it fits within that category of horror or science fiction. Um, so that's Chiller Chat. We have this every Saturday night. Folks, again, once I, 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 I say this, every Saturday night, Chiller Night Theater, Chiller Chat, the Chiller Programming on Stream Television from 9 p.m. until 3.30, 3.45 every Saturday night. And I do the Chiller Night pre-show, just a, an interactive, not even a show, it's more like a, pr a little presentation, me and you. I'm just sitting here in front of my camera talking to you folks, letting you know what's on Stream TV at 9, 9 p.m., um, I try to make it a little fun, and I appreciate you guys, you know, uh, chatting back and forth with me. Kind of helps pass the uh, the hour, but I, you know, I read the schedule and and uh, talk, tell you about the upcoming guests and so forth. But um, stream TV, how can I watch it? You may ask. Let me tell you, <laughs> there's three ways you can watch it. If you live in Oil City or the surrounding areas, Cranberry, uh, um, not Franklin, they have their own. They have their own TV station, but uh, I know Oil City, Cranberry, in that area, Venango County, um, Comcast Channel 20, that's your local uh, access television channel. Fortunately, for the rest of us who live outside of that viewing area, there's a, there's a way to watch it. I have people watching it in Florida, in, in, uh, in, in the state of Washington. I have people watching it all over. Uh, in Illinois, I have people watching this all over because of Stream TV. Um, you can go to streammedia.tv. That's the link I, I put up above here on my on my uh, um, comment, my narrative description for tonight's video. Click on that. Go to streammedia.tv, and you can either watch the programming streamed right there online. They're, they've got a screen for that. Or you can just go down the scroll down the side of the screen, click and connect to the Roku channel. That's what I do. I I, I rather enjoy that to be able to, to watch that right on my TV. So I've got a Roku TV, or you can go out and buy the Roku device. I think that's becoming more of a, a common thing now that people have access to Roku. But um, 
Now we've got nine minutes, nine minutes left, folks. Nine minutes. I'm going to share something with you that I happen to be, I happen to be going through uh, some things. If you've seen my Facebook page today, you see Ava and I, we went to a Spirit of Halloween store. And uh, it's just, you know, this time of the year, I kind of, you know, I just really enjoy it because you're, you're, Finishing up the summer, the nights and the mornings are getting a little cooler, you know, and I can't help but think of Halloween. I'm sure many of you probably feel the same way, but I was rooting through my stuff, and I found a few of my old uh, haunted house flyers from the House of Terror. That was my first haunted house back in 2006. I don't know if you can see that all that well. A House of Terror. Coming October 2006. Now that was it. I was I had, I had a different company back then. It was uh, Sleepy Hollow Amusements Incorporated. Um, but uh, that was my first haunted house, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. My second year, I actually did two haunted houses. I did two of them. Like like one <laughs> one wasn't hard enough. But this is the flyer that we put out for, for two of them it because it, we called it the Fright Fest where we had the House of Terror. Whoops, must be in the House of Terror. And that was the first year of, of the Dark Domain, my, my, my second haunted house, the Dark Domain. We had a calendar on here for it. And then, of course, our, our key character, Jack Shadow. And then on the back, we have a little description. And this is the first mention of what was called Sleepy Hollow Theater back then because of the, I was part of this uh, Sleepy Hollow amusement. So it was called Sleepy Hollow Theater. It is no longer called that. It is now, as you know, Chiller Night Theater as of uh, May of 2015. And then here's my 2008 House of Terror um, poster. House of Terror, again, with Jack Shadow, the, the poster child. And uh, there is only one. And uh, grand opening was was with, whoops, I guess on this side, you can see uh, horror movie icon Tom Savini was our, our grand opening special guest. So that was kind of neat. That was fun. That was a lot of fun doing that stuff. And uh, I look to I look to get back into that. But since I've moved to a different location, a different uh, venue. You know, it's not something I can just snap my fingers and come up with. So we'll, I'm, I'm looking at some options right now and uh, never know, never know. Maybe in a year or two, I'll, I'll have another one in my neck of the woods. Um, any, any last questions, concerns, comments? If not, folks, I really appreciate you, uh, Kelly Allen, if you're on here, by the way, if you're still watching, I, I'm going to, I was, I've been thinking about, um, I'm going to private message you. I want to see if uh, you'd be interested in being one of the guests on Chiller Chat. And uh, I've, I've been thinking about that uh, quite a bit lately. I actually wrote your name down just for that. But, um, but anyways, um, thank you all for joining me tonight. I'll let you go now because it's five till and what you do now is very important. Now, might I suggest, I mean, if you're going to settle in to watch Chiller Night Theater, there are a few things you need to do. And you need to take this advice and take it very seriously. You got to get your popcorn. You got to get your candies or, or whatever snacks you, you need to get. You got to get your pizza ready. And probably most importantly, you got to get your little safety blanket. All right. Now, Jack Shadow mentions that probably every week. Pull that blanket up around you tight. All right. So uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes to go get your stuff. All right. And get ready and get settled in um, <laughs> to watch Chiller Night Theater and Chiller Chat on Stream TV. If anybody, anybody, anybody has any problems logging on to that or can't can't get the show for whatever reason, uh, please let me know. I mean, don't 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 suffer in silence when it comes to this. Uh, let me know, and 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 maybe there's something you know I can I can do to help you log on there. I've had some people uh, contact me about that. So Raymond later he says, okay, we'll 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 catch you later, Raymond. Thank you. And uh, but let me know 
until uh, until I see you next week. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me. Have a good night. Have a good chiller night. I'll see you next week. <laughs>